I remember like I asked you, I, I messaged you like, yo, what's your use case for stable coins? Cause like I was looking into the video that you made and also Terra UST, man, it, it seems like people just use stable coins to like either hold as cash or like you just said, um, you can, you can earn a, a return on them. What would you say if you're just offering some preliminary, I'm not saying give me advice or anything, but what would you say would be the best use case for stable coins, uh, like right now? For example, say I have uh, an asset that has gone up in value for me a lot. I bought it for 50 bucks and now it's worth 500 bucks. As soon as I sell that asset, I'm going to incur a capital gain of 450 bucks, the difference of what it's worth now and what I bought it for. Instead of taking that capital gains hit, I can deposit that asset as collateral and take a loan against it. That loan would be denominated in stable coins. Okay, then I have those stable coins to do what I want with. Whether I do anything with those stable coins at that point, that's just a way of me accessing the liquidity of an asset that has gone up in value that I do not want to sell. This is something that they're trying desperately to unlock on Bitcoin in a decentralized way because there's so much capital locked in Bitcoin as part of the reason why we're low key bullish on stacks, not financial advice. Getting access or um, borrowing. Is, is one of the key ones because any financial market, you, you're either going to do payments, okay? So me sending money to you or me sending money to a vendor. That's what a stable coin could be used for in a place where they accept stable coins. In many countries, people take tether for things because whatever is going on in their, their local financial system is predict, preventing them from using the traditional banking, right? So stable coins could be used for payments and transacting between peers. They can be used for borrowing and lending and borrowing and lending takes the form of me borrowing against my own assets. And it also takes the form of uh, me depositing into somewhere and earning a yield on that, because what I'm actually doing is I'm lending my money to the bank. It doesn't always feel like you're lending, but like as a, as a bank, I, I borrow short and I lend long. So like I deposit a hundred bucks in the bank, they pay me 1% and then they loan it out on a mortgage and they collect 5%. And they make the 4% arbitrage on those borrow and lend rates. Okay. So when I put money in the bank, I'm lending. That's another reason to use a stable coin. Another thing would be what if I'm trading? Okay. So I have US dollars and I want to trade perpetual swaps, which are basically kind of futures contract on crypto that never settles. Usually a futures contract has a date when the contract has to settle, right? They have these things that never settle. You could trade Bitcoin futures, you know, Ethereum perps on some decentralized exchange. The only way you're going to be able to do that is with a stable coin. So you're going to need to take your US dollars, trade them for a stable coin, then bring them on to whatever exchange has the perp swaps. And then you're going to buy those financial derivatives on there. So you can use them for trading. You can use them for payments. You can use them for borrowing and lending. Those are the main things that you're going to use a stable coin for.